Hello again, everybody. I'm Snapper Lancaster. Welcome you to another edition of the Central Alabama High School Sports Show. Well, as you know, last week we recognized three championship uh, high school football teams. We had their coaches up, got a, had a nice visit with them. Tonight we're into the basketball arena. It's basketball season, nearing playoff time. As a matter of fact, we've got two outstanding coaches that we look forward to visiting with. And um, when it comes to basketball, both boys and girls, we have got quite a few teams that are in the top ten here in the state. And I'm going to talk about them in just a second because that's what they all play for is one to be the best they can be. First, we'll start with the boys. In Class 6A, Mountain Brook, number one in the state right now, and as they finished the champions last year. And Spain Park is number five in the top ten. Now that's in Class 7A. In Class 6A, we have uh, Bessemer City at number three. We have Woodlawn at number four. Pelham at number seven. Clay Chonkville at number eight. Four teams represented in the top ten. In Class 5A, you've got Ramsey High School at number three. You got Parker at number six, Shelby County at number eight, Columbiana at number nine. And finally, for the boys in class 3A, the Midfield Patriots are ranked number two in the state. Very quickly, the young ladies in class 7A, we have uh, Thompson, and we'll hear more about them. Ranked number five in the state, Hoover number six, class 6A, Homewood, Center Point, and Clay Chalkwell are one, two, three in class 6A. Shades Valley is number six. In class 5A, you've got Winona number one in the state, and you've got Pleasant Grove number six. So as you can see, a lot of great basketball being played by both the young uh, men and young women here in the Birmingham Jefferson County area. Don't you go away when we get back, our first coach, and we'll get started in just a moment. The community features a world-class resort and spa, the amazing Robert Trent Jones Trail Golf Course, miles of historic trails, and the whole family loves the pool at Ross Park. Now, are we gonna have to watch your vacation slides all night? This was supposed to be a party. Well, this isn't my vacation. I live here. Ooh. Make this your best year. Benton Nissan has the best Nissan deals, and in 2015, we're happy to bring you the best warranty in Birmingham. Get our exclusive million-mile warranty on new and pre-owned Nissans. Plus, during the Best for Less event, 2015 Ultimas are just $18,980. 2014 Rogues, only $19,980. Shop a huge selection of top pre-owned vehicles from $99 a month. Get the best for less at Benton Nissan in Hoover or in Oxford. Come see me, your friend in the car business. If you want to personalize that special vehicle you drive, whether it be a car, SUV, or that truck that you love so much, then you need to visit the drive shop. They're located between downtown Trussell and Deerfoot Parkway on Highway 11, where their fine service staff of professionals are waiting to serve you. The services include auto systems, security and remote start systems, tires and wheels, and window tinting, just to name a few. So come by and visit them today or find them online at thedriveshop.com or visit us on the Facebook. That's the Drive Shop in Trustful, 533-8785. Also, if you mention Snapper's name, you receive a 10% discount. Good driver discount, multi-car discount, good student discount. Helping you save money on car insurance is just part of the service you get from State Farm Agent Jack Traffinstead. Whether an accident or a simple question, Jack and his staff get you the help you need. And that's the value only a State Farm Agent can provide. Call Jack Traffinstead today. 40 million drivers already know. Nobody gives more discounts to more drivers than State Farm. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. And welcome back, folks. In this first segment tonight, we're going to be visiting one of the longtime coaches here in the Birmingham area. And, of course, we're talking about George Hatton of the Vestavia Rebels. Coach, always good to see you. Good to see you sir. And as uh, we start this um, uh, interview off with you, Coach, a lot of times, and it's been a while since you've been on our program, and uh, we'd like for you to tell our audience how you ended up at Vestavia, where you started out in your career, and, and let's see how we got there. Okay. I spent uh, the first two years out of college at Fairfield High School, the next two years at Mortimer Jordan. Then I was fortunate enough to go to Possess Middle School with uh, Coach Mutt Runnels. Uh, worked over there for three years and then came to Vestavia and been the basketball coach at the high school ever since then. And I tell you what, talking about this is a lot of years of experience. I think we talked about 40 plus, 42 somewhere years, the, yeah, something somewhere like in that. Somewhere in the neighborhood. 
Coach, one thing that I find very interesting, and uh, it's according to what the coaches say, and they have different answers about this question, but how have the athletes changed through the years? Uh, probably a little bit bigger, a little bit stronger, maybe a little bit more well-conditioned. I think as we go, uh, our knowledge changes. Uh, what we do as far as the off-season is concerned, the amount of time uh, that kids put in, it's in today's society, in today's games, it's difficult to be a three or four sport player. Right. Uh, just uh, the requirements are so great. But uh, from a standpoint of, of the kids changing, they haven't. There's still a lot of really good kids. Uh, parenting probably is a little bit different than it used to be. Uh, more burdens, more responsibilities. I, I think you probably, we could sort of say it like this. You have um, uh, the, the normal parent home, the single parent home. Uh, the um, parent for their stepdads or stepmoms in there. Right. And all this uh, go into that equation, what makes a youngster a little bit different because you grow up outside that natural uh, family environment sometimes. And let, and let me ask you this too. One other thing I've heard, and then we'll get strictly to basketball, is the, the uh, internet and cell phones. <laughs> it's changing, no question about that. They're all, uh, right on top of Instagram and Twitter and all those things, that, that makes it a little bit different. It gives them, uh, it, it does broaden their world and gives them greater opportunities to be more uh, international and global. Uh, well, I, I know too, Coach, uh, getting back to Vestavia in particular, all through these years you've got a couple of championships that, at, from Vestavia. But let's talk about this year's team. I know um, your team got off to a pretty good start. It's uh, gone and had quite the success you had early in the season, but every coach, I think, and I'll let you uh, expand on this, wants his team to peak the nearer you get to playoff time. That's when you want them to play the best basketball. If you can make that happen, uh, that's really something that, as you said, you strive for, but you can't control it. Uh, one of the things that uh, the late Joe Paterno used to say, he, want, he said, we want to be always good and consistent and occasionally great. And it's, we'd like to do that. You can't control it. Basketball season breaks down into about uh, really four different parts. Uh, the early part of the year where you play a bunch of people that are not in your area, not in your region. And then you get to your holiday tournaments. Uh, and, and here again, you're still building on all that stuff. Right after the first of the year, you begin to get into area play, which is the more significant part of it. But as you go along, you're trying to build to that. And then as you go through area play, you're trying to build where you'll be ready when the area tournament comes. It's a tournament sport. And so with, with all that in mind, like you say, the, the, the building blocks that you take to get there, talk about your team now, how they are, but before you get to that part about how they are right now, talk about the offense, the defense, because believe it or not, folks, uh, basketball has both those elements, an offense and a defense, and talk about your style. It, it does. Uh, I have several different philosophies that I've kind of lived by. One is uh, I think games are determined most of the time by players. I think if, you, if, if they play well, uh, I think they're the ones that determine the outcome of the game, not many coaches. Uh, I think there are some games that a coach has an effect in, but primarily the coaching part comes the day-to-day -day maintenance, the day-to-day -day practice, the repetition, uh, those philosophies, those ideals that you believe in. Uh, we are a half-court offensive basketball team. We've, our philosophy of the game has never been, we didn't particularly want to see bad shooters shooting a lot of shots. We want to see good shooters shooting a lot of shots. And uh, so because of that, uh, we try to limit what we do. Uh, we ask our players to be self-directed, uh, know what your limitations are, know what your shot range is, know what's a good shot for you. Uh, we feel very comfortable with kids shooting the ball from inside the arc. If they can make 50% of those shots they take outside the arc, it's a different number. Uh, the number there is 33%. So either one of those two numbers we would be very, very happy with. Uh, defensively is the part of the game that I feel like you can teach and you can instruct. Uh, and, and so we spend a lot of our time trying to do that and see if we can't build from there. Well, I tell you what, having said that, to this point, do you think now your, your team has experienced a little up and down uh, in, during the season, but do, you, but do you see them sort of gaining that confidence, playing the best basketball, both offensively and defensively, as you close in on this important part of the season? Yeah, yeah, we, we feel pretty good about all of that stuff. Uh, you never know. I mean, of course, every coach is trying to do the same thing we're trying to do. They're trying to peak at the right time, play good at the right time. Uh, we're not going to be able to go to our area tournament and fool whoever we play. 
we're just going to have to play better than what they are. Uh, to say we won't have a wrinkle or two in there w wouldn't be correct. But, uh, yeah, we feel really, really, first of all, our kids are really a great joy to coach. Uh, they work hard. They're respectful. They've been uh, well taught in, in the younger grades at the middle school and then with our JV and our freshman programs. Uh, a lot of them are excellent students. They work hard at that part of it. Uh, they work hard at the game of basketball. And uh, yeah, we feel we, we're going to have a shot. We're, gonna we're, have we're shot. good. And, and time seems to fly when, when we're talking like this, and we've got about a minute and a half left in here. But the, the one question I want to ask you is, is where we talk about somebody other than the head basketball coach <laughs> just for a second. We talk about the head basketball coach's significant other because it takes a very special lady to be a coach's wife no matter what sport. Yeah. Tell us about your relationship <laughs> and your wife. Uh, I've been very fortunate. We got married when we were, both of us were 19, and uh, we're 67 now, so we've been together for a long, long period of time. Uh, we went to the park today with my granddaughter, and uh, we're sitting there and we're talking. We're up at one of our elementary schools, and during the summers, I would take time away from my wife and children to go paint. Uh, and, and try to make a little bit of extra money in the summer. My wife has just been the most unbelievably supportive person, uh, allowing me to do idiot stuff like go paint in the summers and go to coaching clinics. And then uh, early on when we had one gym, uh, we, I'd practice football in the afternoon and basketball at night. And sometimes I'd coach all three teams because everybody else was still coaching football. And she, dinner was ready when I got home and she was always very understanding, did a heck of a job raising the kids. Well, back to business, and they all feel the same way, Coach. As we bring this to a close, I hope you and your team play and perform the best you played this season as the playoffs are coming on, and always good to see you. Thank you. Good to see you, Smith. We'll take a quick break, and we come back four young gentlemen that's been an important part of this season from Best State of Rebel. Don't you go away. sure we should take this billboard down? People find out State Farm does car loans as well as they do insurance. Our bank is through. Good point. Grab an edge. Look, there's two guys on the State Farm Borrow Better banking sign. No, for real, there's two dudes on the State Farm Borrow Better banking sign. Gentlemen, please get down from the State Farm Borrow Better banking sign. Bill, get the hose. Okay, he's getting the hose. All right, let's go. Want to borrow better? Contact State Farm agent Thomas Waters about a car loan that can save you hundreds. Land of Frost Premium is America's best-selling one-pound daily pouch. Now available in 12 delicious flavors, including new flavors of muskeet turkey and cotto salami. High school athletes across the country ask for Land of Frost by name. These great items are available at your local grocer, including Piggly Wiggly, Food Giant, Western Supermarkets, and many more. Land of Frost also makes other varieties of lunch meats, including daily shaved bristro and sub sandwich kits. Land of Frost is a proud sponsor of youth sports as well. The community features a world-class resort and spa, the amazing Robert Trent Jones Trail Golf Course, miles of historic trails, and the whole family loves the pool at Ross Park. Now, are we going to have to watch your vacation slides all night? This was supposed to be a party. Well, this isn't my vacation. I live here. Ooh. And folks, welcome back. And in this segment, we'll be visiting with four young Vestavia uh, Rebel foot, uh, basketball players that have been an important part of this team up until this point. And like the coach and I talked about just a moment ago, I think they are hoping their basketball, best basketball is still ahead of them. Sitting closest to me, and all these young gentlemen are seniors. Anthony Evans, the point guard, right? Forward. Forward, okay, I got that good. <laughs> All right, and Sam Wiggins, Sam, you're a senior, your yes, position. Point guard. Okay, that's, I don't know how I got that backwards, I can manage it. Ryan Dobbs, right here, and Ryan is a senior guard, and we got that. And then Spencer Haynes, and you're a senior, also and a, a guard too. also a guard. Well, good, now there we go. Now, uh, as we get into this conversation, Anthony, going into the season, 
How many years you been playing basketball there, Best uh, Savior? Four, since freshman right. year. So you've been around a while. So Going into this season, what kind of season did you figure that you and your teammates might have? Uh, I was planning on a good season. Um, you know, we have four seniors, so we uh, have some experience. And uh, we definitely have some younger guys too, though. Got a freshman. Uh, I was expecting a better year than last year, for sure. Well, I, I was talking with um, uh, a coach, uh, Hatchet, just a minute about uh, the team peaking. Now, do you feel like, I know you've had a little peaks and valleys, not big ones, but little ones. Do you feel like you and your teammates are, your, are at the point where your basketball is picking up again, you're starting to play well? Yes, sir. I think we're capable of playing uh, good basketball. We played all the area teams at this point, and uh, I, think, I think we'll do just fine. When this, uh, uh, Sam, one question I'd like to ask you. I know you're a football player as well in yes, basketball. Sir. Which, and this is putting you on the spot, sort of, but which sport do you enjoy playing the most? Uh, I would have to say basketball because it's more fun, I guess. When they talk about one, one thing, one aspect we talk about the teams involved in whatever sport it is, is team chemistry. If you guys like one another or get along well, it's so much easier for you, so much easier for the coaches. Talk about the chemistry for this team and, and how you guys get along and what it's meant to you. Uh, I think we have great team chemistry. Uh, most of our players love each other, well, all of our players love each other. And, I mean, we were supportive of each other. Like when we get down, somebody will go shake somebody's hand or just tell them that they're doing fine and it'll be okay. Do you think your best basketball is still ahead of you? Yeah, I think so. Well, good. Okay, Ryan, um, having said the same thing, I'm curious about you. You played football as well, right? Yes, sir. Now, uh, which one of those two sports did you like the most? Uh, I, I personally like both of them. I'm pretty equal. It's just in the season. They're you are season. going to make a good <laughs> politician. You don't, you don't want to anger anybody. But that's great. I mean, that's what a coach wants to hear. Um, are you one of these guys, and I ask the players and this a lot, that do you enjoy or feel more comfortable playing at home or do you like playing on the road? And the reason I tell you, tell you this, I've had a lot of players tell me that there's not as much pressure on the road as there is to do well at home. How do you feel about that? I, I would agree with that statement. Sometimes I like playing on the road because it's just, it's a wave. You don't have like really a lot of people from your own school that's like watching you that don't know what you did. But, but it's also nice to have some of your students at home playing at home, get some support behind you. So you feel like there's pluses and negatives on both yeah. of them, right? Yeah. Uh, Spencer, um, who in how many years you've been playing basketball? I've been playing basketball six years. I really? Guess. Okay, so you uh, yeah. the last four varsity or three years on the varsity? Uh, two years on the varsity. Oh, okay. Team. Now let me ask you that. In those two years, is there any one team you enjoy playing more than another and you look forward to or do you have rivalries with? Um, I think every team presents a challenge to us and I think that it's fun to just play different style teams. And obviously area play is the most important for us because that matters the most. Right. Do you feel like that your team, you and your, your teammates are, are peaking maybe at the best time playing your better basketball? I do think uh, we're starting to play better here down the home stretch. And I think that we've got some exciting things left for us. All right. Now, now I've just met you guys a few minutes ago. And you've got uh, friends. You've had a long, long time friends. You've had a short while. And the question that I want to ask, and so the guys that don't get it asked first, you don't have to think about it as much. So the first guy's going to have to be a quick thinker. Sorry, Anthony, that's you. No. But let's just say there's something, you got a hobby or you got something you enjoy that doing that not many people know about. I'll give an example. Some of you may be a guitar player. Some of you might write poetry or what, what, what. So if there was something in your background and I don't mean to put you on the spot that people don't know about. What would, what could you say? Well, I just got a guitar for Christmas, so I'm going to say I'm a guitarist now. <laughs> and, I'm learning. And I want you to know I did not know that before you said that, right? <laughs> yes, so, sir. Are, are you a, a rocker? Are you a country? Or definitely country. Definitely country. Yes, Who's sir. your favorite artist? Um, I'd say Aldine, Jason okay. Aldine. Well, he's pretty successful. Yes, sir, he, he is. Right? Can you sing? No. Okay. Well, that's sing. good. If you could be a backup for them guys, that'd be great. There you How go. about you, Sam? Uh, uh, I've been pretty much an aide at my church really? for a while, so I've just been, since I was 13, I've been helping the teachers out with the little kids and stuff. Well, that's great. That's so. great. Um, do you ever have any um, of the little kids, do you get a chance to tell them why, in this case, uh, basketball has meant so much to you and maybe they ought to play? No, they haven't really asked me about basketball. It's, uh, it's more spiritually related? Yes. Well, good, good. Um, okay, Ryan, how about you? 
Uh, I've actually, a couple years ago, started playing the piano, because my dad plays the piano, and so I've been learning how to play the piano, just play some popular songs that are out right now. So. Yeah, well, that's terrific. Spencer? I just like to read. I'm a big reader. Are you? To the books. Yes, sir. Well, there's nothing wrong with gaining more knowledge. No, sir. You know why? Either. We never know when we might need a little bit of it, right? <laughs> all right, well, all of you guys are seniors, so... Uh, I like to play Make Believe sometime on the show and it gives you guys to, to tell how you might really feel about where you might want to go to school when you graduate and everything. And it may be a different school than you might end up at. So having said that, if you could go to any college you wanted to, whether it be for sports, academics, or whatever, first of all, where would you go and what kind of courses would you take? Because what would you like to do in the future maybe? We'll start with you, Anthony. Uh, my heart's always been at Auburn ever since I was a little kid. And uh, right now I'm thinking kinesiology uh, as a major, but that's probably gonna change. Uh, sports medicine, marketing, one of the two. Well, and see that, it's, it's strange you say that, because one thing I always like to ask the athletes too, is um, you've been going through these different sports through the years, and in this case, basketball. You ever thought about one teaching and, and maybe being a basketball, high school basketball coach one day? I have thought about that, and uh, I don't know. I mean, we're just going to have to see. Yeah, well, that's the good thing about life. You just tackle situations. Uh, there, there's going to be a new road you're going to go down, and uh, it'll, it'll be very interesting to see it where it takes you. How about you, Sam? Uh, you go? Well, I always wanted to go to University of Southern California, and major economics and business, but instead I'm probably going to be at Tuskegee, so I'm really happy about that too. Well, what, uh, uh, if you didn't make it in that field, have you ever considered uh, teaching and coaching? Uh, or do you think that's a line that just might not work for you? I mean, not really. I've, I've thought about maybe being an engineer, but oh, okay, not about well, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, and, and coach will tell you this. Um, coaching is not for everybody. I mean, you've got to have a call for that, too, and be led in that direction. Uh, with that thought in mind, Ryan, how about yourself? I'm like Anthony. I've been an Auburn fan ever since I was a kid. Love the environment down there. So that's where I'm going to go next fall, and I'm probably either going to do engineering or accounting. Okay, so there's no, no uh, idea down the road of maybe coaching for you. I like, I like coaching, but I don't know if I'd like the teaching aspect of it but I've always liked working with kids, so that'd be, I thought about it definitely. When a, please don't take this the wrong way, but being a staunch Alabama fan, I will pray for you guys, <laughs> but, but I will say this, a great academic school, and so good luck whatever you decide to do and, and, and how the course may work out for you. Spencer, how about you? Well, if everything goes according to plan, I'd like to end up at uh, the University of Virginia up in Charlottesville. But, uh, and like Sam said, economics right now is, I feel like that would be my major at this point. Well, and, uh, and, and I asked um, young athletes this a lot. What's it been like, um, and what are some of the lessons that uh, Coach Hatchett has taught you in the years that you've been there? We'll start with you, Anthony. I'm sorry, what was the question? Uh, what uh, uh, Coach Hatchett has taught you as far as preparing for life or, or even the sport, what is it you've enjoyed about that um, uh, basketball career you've had at the stadium? Um, coaches taught us, you know, never give up on each other. Uh, definitely we've had our ups and downs and uh, he's always taught us just to, you know, never quit. And uh, I think we, like he said, we've got some interesting basketball ahead of us. Our best, we, our best game hasn't been played yet. Good. So, How about you, Sam? Uh, along with what Anthony said, that when things get hard, you can't just quit because in life, stuff's going to go wrong, but you can't give up on your family or, or whoever, if someone's counting on you all the time. So. You just gotta fight through it. Good. How about you, Ryan? Uh, it would probably be like, basketball is definitely a team sport. It's not tennis or golf individual. So it's like, you gotta buy into your team, you gotta put your team before yourself. And you have, definitely, have to have to, uh, definitely have to play as a team if you wanna win. So that's probably one big lesson. Okay, Spencer? Yes, you definitely have to trust your teammates out on the court and trust that they know what they're doing. And at the same time, they trust that you know what you're doing as well. Well, well good, you're, you're, you're right on all, all points there. One other question that I really enjoy uh, asking young athletes because you get varied answers and you get a lot of the same answers, but it's a very important question. And uh, to this point in your young lives, all of you guys are seniors. Tell me who's been the most inspirational person or persons to this point in your life. I'd say my grandmother. My grandmother's taught me a lot. And uh, 
I wish I could take her to college with me, but uh, that's not going to happen. And uh, I don't know, she just taught me a lot like Coach Hatchett, never give up on uh, your teammates, your family, and uh, it'll always get better. Good. How about you, Sam? Uh, my father, he taught me that how to be a better man where it comes to sports or to life. And he's just always trying to be there to support me so that when it's time, I have to make the right decision instead of the wrong decision. Okay. Ryan, how about you? It would probably be my parents, but mainly my father because uh, he saw me a lot. He played sports in high school, too, so he taught me a lot about team sports. He always wanted me to play a team sport to know how to put others before yourself and never give up when uh, things are tough. Good. Spencer? I'd say my grandfather. He's always there to support me, whether it's in athletics or something school-related. He's just always been there for me. Well, good. Guys, it's been a pleasure to have you on the show with us. We wish you all the luck in the world after you graduate. But before then, we wish you one more two or three week span where you play some great basketball. It'd be nice to bring home a state championship, would it? Yes, sir. But listen, good luck to y'all in whatever you do, okay? Thank you very much. Folks, we'll take a brick break. We come back, another coach and some of the athletes. Thank you, Lord. The Drive Shop in Trustful not only personalizes cars, SUVs, and trucks, they can personalize your motorcycle or ATV as well. They also specialize in automotive accessories to fit your specification. They provide performance and fuel economy upgrades, lift kits, off-road accessories, custom lighting, bed liners, and much more. Once again, that's the Drive Shop located just north of downtown Trustful on Highway 11. They're open Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 7 p.m. and on Saturday, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. The number to call, 533-8785 or visit us online at thedriveshop.com or like us on Facebook. Don't forget, you'll receive a 10% discount if you mention Snapper's name. Take your taste to a different place. It's the taste of hamburger heaven. A taste of heaven is always best. And now you know that you're blessed. Give your taste a whole new spin. Land of Frost Premium is America's best-selling one-pound daily pouch. Now available in 12 delicious flavors, including new flavors of muskeet turkey and cotto salami. High school athletes across the country ask for Land of Frost by name. These great items are available at your local grocer, including Piggly Wiggly, Food Giant, Western Supermarkets, and many more. Land of Frost also makes other varieties of lunch meats, including deli shaved bistro and sub sandwich kits. Land of Frost is a proud sponsor of youth sports as well. Make this your best year. Benton Nissan has the best Nissan deals, and in 2015, we're happy to bring you the best warranty in Birmingham. Get our exclusive million-mile warranty on new and pre-owned Nissans. Plus, during the Best for Less event, 2015 Ultimas are just $18,980. 2014 Rogues, only $19,980. Shop a huge selection of top pre-owned vehicles from $99 a month. Get the best for less at Benton Nissan in Hoover or in Oxford. Come see me, your friend in the car business. And this will be your premium right here. Sorry to interrupt. I just want to say I combined home and auto with State Farm. Saved 760 bucks. Love this guy. Okay, does it bother anybody else that the mime is talking? Freaky. Bundle home and auto, and you could save 760 bucks. That's 760 very good reasons to call Alan Gurdot in Trustville today. The community features a world-class resort and spa. The amazing Robert Trent Jones Trail Golf Course. Miles of historic trails. And the whole family loves the pool at Ross Park. Now, are we going to have to watch your vacation slides all night? This was supposed to be a party. Well, this isn't my vacation. I live here. Ooh. Ooh. 
And welcome back, folks. Uh, once again, we've got an outstanding coach. It's, we're going to ladies basketball right now. And this is Josh Golden, second year head coach at Thompson. And uh, Coach uh, Golden, as we get started in a conversation with our coaches, we'd like them to tell our audience who might be seeing you for the very first time a little bit about your background and what has led you to be the uh, head girls coach there at Thompson. Yes, yeah, sir. So first of all, thank you for having us. We are thrilled to be here, and it's an honor to be asked, and we're glad to be here tonight. Um, I started out my, I graduated from Huntington College in Montgomery and played basketball and baseball there, graduated in 2003, and took my first coaching job right out of college at Kingwood Christian. I coached the boys there, and uh, from there went to the University of Montevallo and got my master's and was a uh, graduate assistant for the men's team for two years, and, um, I, and then I went and coached boys for a while. I coached uh, boys at Alma Bryant High School, and then uh, I coached for three years at Tuscaloosa Academy, which is a private school, and coached the boys and the girls, and uh, left from there and was the boys coach at Sylacauga for a couple of years, and um, all my family's from Birmingham. My brother-in-law is the head boys coach at Thompson, and um, it was an intriguing opportunity to get back close to home, and so I did, and I'm in my second year now coaching the girls at Thompson. Well, now let me tell you, that sounds like a pretty good background, and out of it, I come up with this one question that I would be curious about, and you're the guy to ask a question like this. What's the difference in coaching young men and young ladies? <laughs> How long do you have? <laughs> um, they, you know, at the end of the day, it's still... The game's still the same, the floor's still the same, the, it's still 10 feet and 15 for a free throw and 84 feet long, but um, you, you can't coach them the same way, and uh, it, they're just, they're different, and uh, you know, guys, I feel like you can uh, maybe, the, the way you talk with them be a little bit different. I always try to uh, make sure that we talk to guys or girls with, with respect and um, make sure that, uh, that I always tell them if you're respectful to them, then hopefully they'll be respectful to you in return. But, um, you just have to be a little bit softer with girls, and you can, um, you know, I think sometimes the, the game's not quite as fast. Um, we probably, with our girls, actually run a lot more stuff in the half court than sometimes I did with, with my boys' teams at Silicaga. We press like crazy and got up and down, and, and we, we do press in spots as well at Thompson, and we try to get out and run, but uh, a little bit more controlled in the half court. and uh, So it's a different game, but I, I enjoy both of them, uh, coaching both equally. Well, let me ask you this, too. Uh, when it comes to the boys and girls, I've always heard this, and, and you could either verify it or say, Snapper, you're 100% wrong, and that is that the girls play what I would call more bas basic basketball. They're better. A lot of times free throw shooting, passing, playing basic defense and stuff like that because it's not as athletic up and down the court as fast you can go. So they more or less concentrate on the simple part of the game more than the, than the physical part. Yeah, I think it depends on uh, the group that you have. You know, when I was at, uh, when I coached at Tuscaloosa Academy, that group was extremely fundamentally sound. It was A to B to C. Um, at, at Thompson, we have a really good group of athletes. And so um, as, far as, at the, as, as far as the girls game goes, I think we're as athletic as anybody we play and can get up and down and can make some of the more athletic plays that you might see some of the boys teams make. And so uh, while we have improved in all those areas from the foul line and from three point shooting in all those areas, uh, we don't have to necessarily just go um, from you know point A to point B to point C, we can we can do some of the things you see. We can make the cross court pass. We can make the skip passes. The long you know get out and run a little bit. So um, I think that uh, I'd like to think that we are in pretty good shape fundamentally, but also we can get out and run a little bit as well. Now let me ask you this: like um, we talked about uh, before, y'all were here. I did my opening. Y'all's team is 20 and five, ranked fifth in in class 7A in the in the girls. So, but and this is your second year there so coming off of last year did you expect the team to be as good as they've turned out to be thus far I, th I, I thought this would be a big year for us when I got here uh, last year I kind of pointed to this season because I knew that we were going to have eight players back that had a bunch of experience and last year we were 22 and 7 we won our area championship and then um, beat Oak Mountain three times in the regular season and then they upset us in the sub-regional and that's just tough to keep beating the same team and then they were all close and uh, so going into this year we had high expectations with with eight uh, eight players returning and four seniors um, I'm not sure that uh, I thought we would have a chance to be successful when we got to the number five ranking I think that's uh, the first time in over 20 years that, that we've had a, a top five ranking maybe and uh, 
So we've maybe exceeded some people's expectations, but it's been our goal since the beginning of the year um, to try to get to a Final Four, and, and that's still the goal. So uh, I've been very pleased with them, but not all that surprised because I knew we had a talented group coming well, back. Well, let's talk just a second, and the time really flies, when, as they were saying, when you're having fun. Uh, talk about your philosophy, and are you the kind that you want the players to adapt what you do? Or do you, are you the kind of coach that says, hey, I got athletes that are better at this than this, so you're going to play them their strengths as well as doing what you want to do? Um, it, it's definitely the latter. When I came in and looked at our group, um, I, I decided after a couple of days that uh, we were going to play um, a lot of 1-3-1 one, one with our length. I'd never played any 1-3-1 one, one in the past. In fact, when I was at Silicaga, we were all man, full court pressure all the time, very little zone. Uh, and now with this group, we play a lot of one three one three quarter court three two um, a lot of stuff a lot of zone where we're able to use our length we've got a, a couple of girls that are over six feet and then our guards are just long and athletic and so uh, yeah I've kind of changed as I've gotten into the girls as to what I thought would be best suited for us and we've had some pretty decent success with it. When uh, coaching years because uh, you've got a little experience how many years total coaching? I'm in my 10th year as a head coach and then I've got two years in college as an well, assistant. Well then that allows me that opens the door for me to ask you this question behind every good coach there's a good coach's wife <laughs> and uh, these ladies are special that, that uh, that follow their husbands and, and deal with what the hours you guys deal with. Tell us about your wife and your family. Well, if you would ask me that um, last year, I wouldn't have been able to give you an answer, but I actually got married in September of this past year. And so uh, she's in her first season with me as a basketball coach. And uh, she's, she loves it. Uh, she loves these girls. She had them over to, uh, for Christmas to have a little Christmas party and they made cookies and played Dirty Santa and watched movies. And she, uh, I, I definitely think they like her more than they like me, um, which is not hard to believe. She's a sweetheart, but um, she's been she's been very supportive and uh, comes to almost all of the games and is just uh, afterwards is extremely supportive. So I'm I'm lucky to have her during the season. Well, we got about 40 seconds left. In that 40 seconds, tell me in the best uh, opinion you have right now of what your team is, where they're at. Are they ready to go and hopefully make some uh, serious uh, damage or a serious ruin of the state time? You know, I would like to think so. I think that uh, last week was kind of a, a emotional up and then down. We went at, to Hoover and beat them, who was number two in the state, 50 to 47, and then turned around and kind of shorthanded on the road at Tuscaloosa County. Uh, dropped one, but I think that got our attention. Uh, we're going to play this week. If we win both games at home against Oak Mountain and Hoover, we're going to win the area championship. And from there, I think we can make some noise in the postseason. Well, first of all, good to meet you. And yes, uh, you got a great season going. Good luck. And I'm hoping they're picking at the right time. Thanks a lot. We'll take a quick break. We'll come back. Four young ladies very instrumental in the success of the Thompson Warrior Lady Warriors. We'll be right back. The community features a world-class resort and spa. The amazing Robert Trent Jones Trail Golf Course. Miles of historic trails. And the whole family loves the pool at Ross Park. Now, oh, are we going to have to watch your vacation slides all night? This was supposed to be a party. Well, this isn't my vacation. I live here. Ooh. And this will be your premium right here. Sorry to interrupt. I just want to say, I combined home and auto with State Farm. Saved 760 bucks. Love this guy. Okay, does it bother anybody else that the mime is talking? Freaky. Bundle home and auto, and you could save 760 bucks. That's 760 very good reasons to call Ted Townley in Homewood today. Hey, and folks, welcome back in this segment. The Lady Thompson Warriors are up here with us, four of them, that is. They're all seniors. They are ranked number five in the state, have a 20 and five record. These girls have not been doing much wrong this season. Girls, good to see you, and congratulations on the season you've had thus far. Now, if I make a mistake up here with the names, I'm the kind of guy, I don't mind them correcting me while we're here. That's, uh, not, that's not what I'm here for, to make them look bad, and believe me, I can do this sometimes. Um, Denise Richardson, yes. all these girls are seniors. Uh, point guard? Yes, sir. Well, good. Um, and Kelsey Bibbins, senior, and you're a forward? 
and then Mael Miller, senior guard, and Maisa Pelton, senior guard. Good. All right, we got that on the road very nicely, girls. I hope I did anyway. And so we will start with you, Janice. Going into this season, you had a pretty good year last year. Yes, sir. Now, I'll ask you about your expectations because they may be different from the coaches, but I got a feeling they might not either. But did you think you and your teammates would have a chance to make a run and be as successful as, so, as you have been so far this year? Yes, sir. Actually, I did because we have so much talent and athleticism on our team. So, I, you know, like going into this year, I was like, this is going to be our best year. I knew this year would be our year. So. You know what? There's a dip, big difference in being cocky and being confident. And if you can do it, and y'all showing you, you can do it. I think that's what it is. You can be confident when you see you and your teammates playing as well as y'all played thus far this year. Um, Kelsey, a question that I might ask you, coming off a very successful year last year, seniors this year, one thing that makes a team sometimes go from being good to becoming great together is something we call team chemistry. In other words, do you like your teammates? Do y'all get along well? And I know you ladies have a reputation of being waking up in a different world every day sometimes, and I don't mean that ugly. I just mean y'all are different from us guys that think we know what's going on. Okay, sometimes we do, sometimes we don't. Having said that, I talk about the relationship, the chemistry on this year's team. Well, I think that our team chemistry is, like, I think it's really great. I think that it really help us, help, will help us in a long stretch with state and getting ready for state. When uh, last year, you all you girls were juniors. You had a good year last year. And so do you anticipate coming back? Did you think in your mind, we ought to be better? If we listen to coach, we ought to be better to go further. Is yes, that? sir. Okay. All right. And then that brings us to Mael. And uh, Mael, do you, do you, Mael, do you play any other sports or is it basketball? Just basketball. Just basketball. Why do you love basketball so much? Um, definitely because it's a team sport and it's just not by itself. And you make a lot of new friends uh, being on the team with other people, and it just brings you out more. Now, have you been? How long have you been playing basketball? I've been playing basketball ever since I was seven. Oh, okay. So you've been playing a while. Have you had the opportunity to share with other young ladies who might come up to you why they should play basketball? Because what I thought it's meant to you. Um, Definitely, like just getting out and playing with other people and seeing other people like it just helps me, like help them to see that they would enjoy the sport also. Well, good. And then that brings us to Maisa and um, a senior. Um, does it surprise you what y'all have done this year? Not at all. Um, having been together, us four have been together since the eighth grade and having this team chemistry with these four alone have been good and long, shall we? We all know our, our short ends and our good spots. We know what can bring us down and lift us up. So this year was definitely the year that we all knew was going to happen. To like, We always tell our, our classmates, don't forget to come to the game. You might be surprised. Like People never know what's going to happen out of us. So that's why I tell, like, don't ever stop. Don't ever count out the Lady Warriors. We have been the underdog for so long. We slowly come into the top, and nobody's going to stop us. Well, now, having said that, and, and we'll get back to Janice here, uh, Janice, have you noticed that through the years and you're playing basketball, the interest, the crowds are getting bigger, people are becoming more involved when it comes to the ladies' basketball game? I think so. Like, I would say when I got up here, my ninth grade year, I was playing varsity. It was kind of empty, when there many people there. And I would say by the time my 11th grade year is when I saw like the crowd just expand, which we were having. We were doing really good. We had a good record. So everybody wanted to come out and see what was the big fuss in. Kelsey, what would you tell a young lady what uh, has meant so much to you about playing high school basketball? Uh, just to really just keep playing and do what she likes to do best and just keep her head up. Do you, having said that, do you play any other sports? I play volleyball. Do you? Do you like one better than the other? Volleyball. Oh, <laughs> now I can appreciate you because it would easy, be easy to say basketball because coach is sitting right there. But since you said volleyball, you're going to make a lousy politician, <laughs> but a truthful one. And that's the best kind of politician. Um, all right, girls, uh, here's a question I asked the guys and we got some varied answers. I'm curious what you young ladies might say. I have met you the first time just a few minutes ago, so I know absolutely nothing about you. Now, you've got friends. Y'all have friends you've had a short time, friends you've had a long time. 
Now, what I want to know, if uh, you was going to tell me something that it would surprise me about you, and I'll give you an example of what I'm talking about. Some of you may like to fish. Some of you may like to write poetry. Some of you may like to sing in the shower or outside, because <laughs> uh, I'm sure you ladies have beautiful voices. But if something that might surprise me, what would it be? And Janice, we'll start with you. <laughs> I like to sit on the internet with my dad and look up history that like nobody knows about. Mm -hmm. On it, we just find it interesting. So, really, <laughs> yeah. Uh, what have you found? Anything interesting? <laughs> no, it's just like we like say like stuff we already know. We find out things that nobody else knows. We'd be like, oh, I never knew that. I mean, somebody else might know it, but we don't know it. Yeah, <laughs> like, well, that's where knowledge comes from, <laughs> yeah. right? Uh, good and bad, yeah. <laughs> but we separate the two, right? Well, that's different. That's different. Uh, Kelsey, how about you? Well, I used to have an interest in uh, playing the snare, like percussion and all. Really? Yeah. yeah. You weren't, have you ever been in the band? Yes, I have. Oh, you sort of tricked me there. I didn't know that. <laughs> so during football season, are you marching? No, well, no. I had volleyball, so I couldn't really Oh, and, okay. Well, that cleared that up, too. Okay. <laughs> Uh, Mael, what about you? Um, I used to be in the band also. I played clarinet and I used to uh, play piano. Really? Yeah. Piano, rock and roll, classical, country? Anything that I could play. Oh, anything. <laughs> oh, the, the key that you could, that play. could play. But we know you could play, right? A little bit. Okay. How about you, Mesa? I'm more in the fashion world. I love designing, so I usually like sit at home and look up outfits and just put them together. So I'm weird. <laughs> well, bless your heart. And that really don't surprise me about a young lady. I know fashion is important because we want to look good, as good as we can most of the time, but every once in a while we just want to let our hair down and relax, right? Uh, okay, girls, um, uh, another question that I would like to ask all of your seniors. Let me ask you this. Any of you getting college scholarships or offers in high school basketball? I mean. Yeah, okay. you are, okay, well then that, that might affect the answer I'm going to get on this question, but if you could go to any college, any college, and get the people who are talking to you, if it's not this college, and take a certain subject, one, what would the college be, and two, what kind of subjects would you take, in other words, what would you like to prepare for in the life hereafter, high school or college, okay, and we'll start with you, Janice. Honestly, I always want to be in a school in California, like, cause I just want to be by the beach, so. A beach bum yeah. <laughs> that gets an education and not a bum no yeah. more. Any college in particular, as long as it's on the West Coast. On the West Coast, yeah. Well, bless your heart. That's a different kind of answer. Makes sense, though. Um, Kelsey? Um, I've always wanted to go to Texas, University of Texas. Really? Since they had, like, a really good volleyball team. Mm -hmm. And it's always been, like, my, my dream to go there. But probably going to end up going to UCF instead. That's okay, but I, I liked your dreams too. You gotta dream big, sometimes they come true. You know that, right? Uh, Maisa, how about you, Mayo? Um, I've always wanted to go to Alabama. Oh, you'll be a success in no matter what you do. <laughs> you know that, don't you? What kind of courses, what would you like um, to do? I wanna major in forensics because I wanna become a forensic scientist. Really, okay. Um, Maisa, how about you? Well, I'm currently going to Auburn. Um, that's the only school I've been wanting to go to after yeah. parents going there. So that's home. And right now I want to major in business and minor in fashion merchandising so I could get a business started in fashion. So. Well, now this is sort of maybe going to halfway answer my next question. Um, if the opportunity ever arose, do you think you could ever walk the sideline of a basketball coach like uh, uh, coach? Uh, go in here and, and be a coach. <laughs> well, I know you'd look good. Seeing Coach Golden do it, I, I'm not that strong of a person. He's a very strong person, strong-minded person. He deals with a lot from us. And me personally, I couldn't do it. I, he's a strong man, and me, I... Well, I can appreciate your honesty. <laughs> yeah. And I bet you look good when you walk in and say that, too. And now, how about you, young man? I would have to say the same. Um, he puts in a lot of time and effort in trying to prepare us for our games and what's coming up next. And it takes a lot of heart to do all that stuff, and I just don't think I'd be able to. Yeah, do do, does Coach also help prepare you for life after definitely, high school? Definitely, definitely. How about you? Um, not high school girls, not high school boys, probably little kids, because they all just listen and just <laughs> buy in and whatnot. Yeah. Do mm. you think you could coach them? Yeah. 
You do. <laughs> For some reason, I think you could too. <laughs> Going on with what Maisa said, uh, I kind of don't have the patience for <laughs> girls or just teenagers in general. So no, really. no. Yeah. <laughs> it's not your cup of tea, is yeah. <laughs> Okay, we've only got a minute, girls. Very quickly, this is a very important question. Uh, you got, girls are fixing to graduate, and uh, what I want to know is to this point in your young lives, who's been the most inspirational person or persons, and we'll start with you. My parents, I'll have to say. They support me in whatever I do, so. Well, good for you. My granddad, he always like keeps me smiling and gives me a lot of motivation. Good, life. Yeah. I have to say my mom, because she's always pushing me to do better and make myself better. And my mom, too. She's the only person I can confide in in most things. Well, good. I, I tell you what, I know all those people would be glad to hear that. Girls, we've only got 30 seconds left. You've had a great season thus far. And it's, it's uh, easy to rest on your laurels. You can't do that. The real work is still ahead of you. Focused. I hope you girls are ready the next step, okay? Good luck. Win a championship. We might come back and celebrate, all right? <laughs> Thank uh, you. Folks, we've had a great evening. Two outstanding coaches, outstanding athletes. Same time, same place. Next week, you know what Snapper always says, bicycle.